Ren Guangyi featured in this video studied full-time for 10 years with Chen Shaowang, the 19th generation standard bearer of Chen style Tai Di Chun. Master Ren has won gold medals in the United States in forms, weapons, and push hands championships. Tai Di Chun, or shadow boxing, is one of the most famous divisions of Chinese martial arts. Its recorded history dates back almost 400 years to the beginning of the Qing dynasty. Legend has it that Tai Di Chuan was founded by a wandering Taoist priest named Sang Xiang Fen from the Wudan Mountains in the 15th century. Most books on the subjects published after 1921 accept this myth as fact without any research. Wudang does possess its own branch of martial arts including a form of Tai Di Chun. But this is a very different from the main styles of Tai Ji that are commonly practiced, namely Qin, Yang, Wu, and Sun. As it has an entirely different history and background. An eminent martial arts master named Tang Hao among others, conducted his own research and determined in the 1930s that Tai Di Chun was in fact created by Chen Wang Ding from Wen County in Hunan Province during the 17th century at the time when the Ming Dynasty was replaced by the Qing Dynasty. Chen Wang Ding, a ninth generation member of the Chen family in Chen Village, was a knight and a scholar renowned in Shandong province for having defeated more than 1,000 bandits. He spent his life researching and developing martial arts techniques. First he absorbed the martial arts methods of a Ming general, Qi Ji Guang, called the 32 forms of the canons of boxing which was a very effective and powerful skill that covered 16 different schools of martial arts. From this, he created five sets of shadow boxing, which included one long fist containing 108 forms, and one set called Pao Tui, combat boxing, also known as cannon fist, of which was applied 29 of the 32 movements from the cannons boxing. He also included some Shaolin fist, in particular the red fist, Shaolin staff, and Buddha's warrior's 18 grasping techniques, as well as teachings from other famous masters at the time, such as Ling Bong, Tiang's kicking, Eagle Claw's Wang's grasping, Thousand Falls Chang's throwing, and Chang Bao Jing's hitting. Chen Wang Ting combined martial arts techniques with the ancient methods of Dao Yin and Tu Na. Dao Yin is the concentrated exertion of inner force, while Tu Na is deep breathing exercise from the lower abdominal or Dan Tian. Both of these health preserving skills, which date back to the 4th century BC, later combined and evolved into Qigong. Therefore, the Taiji boxer's consciousness, movements, and breathing are all directly related and connected. Chen Rongting also considered the theory of Jinglo or acupuncture points and channels within the body, through which Qi or vital energy flows, for both attacking an opponent and, more importantly, developing the health of the practitioner. The forms he created were designed to be practiced slowly so as to allow the chi to flow along the channels and stimulate the acupuncture points. He kept a low stance to develop strong powerful legs which provided the foundation of skill but also to help the chi flow and create the heat within the body. Chen also understood that the dantian or lower abdomen is the most important part of the body with regards to chi. So all of the forms utilizes twisting, waist movement, 
better known as silk reeling or spiral energy, to create power. In Tai Di Chuan, all of the movements come from the waist, the energy originating from the Dan Tien out to the hands. He also incorporated the principles of yin and yang, which is the underlining philosophy that unifies every aspect of Chinese culture, permeating its traditional medicine, martial arts, cosmology, and even the culinary arts. This is the universal principle of complementary opposites. Within Tai Chi Jun practice, it can refer to alternating between hard and soft, firm and yielding, fast and slow, expanding and contracting, and solid and empty. Chen Wang Ding was also responsible for the creation of the two-person training exercise to develop sensitivity skill known as pushing hands, which utilizes eight energies of Pang, Lu, Ji, An, Choi, Li, Jiao, and Kao, or warding off, pulling, pressing, controlling, grasping, splitting, elbow striking, and shoulder striking respectively. Chen Wang Ting's boxing routines and push hand techniques were passed down through generations within the Chen family. Chen Changxing, the 14th generation master, created Lao Jia or Old Frame, which consists of two routines, Yi Lu and Er Lu. Yi Lu is the fusion of the three routines cr first created by Chen Wang Ting and is practiced to develop good foundation. Er Lu is the fusion of these early long fists from cannon fist routines and resembles free fighting with increased power, Fa Jing, which is issuing power or explosive energy, speed, footwork, leaping, dodging, elbow and shoulder strikes, and sudden changes of direction. Yi Lu concentrates on building stability, slowly developing silk reeling movements, and eight energies. Yi Lu is considered 80% internal, 20% external, while Er Lu is just the opposite. Without the proper foundation, the internal training from Yi Lu, one can easily injure oneself internally practicing Er Lu due to the vast amounts of energy or vital Qi it consumes. Traditionally, it was felt that one's training was not complete unless both forms were learnt as the emphasis of each is different. On this video, Master Ren will demonstrate Xin Jia Lu first performing the entire routine once through at normal speed and then breaking it down with separate movements with views from front and both sides. Chen Zhangxing was the first Chen family leader to teach the skill to those outside of the family. His main disciple was Yang Lu Chen, who then created Yang Sao Tai Ji upon his arrival to Beijing. He changed Lao Jia to suit it more for health purposes so it became softer and was practiced at more consistently slow tempo. The more difficult movements were omitted and so it was easier to learn and practice, and therefore more accessible for the general population. His grandson, Yang Chen Fu, then created the Big Style with his large and open postures which has become the most popular form of Tai Chi Chuan in China and in the world today. From Yang Taiji came other styles, Wu and Sun. The 17th generation master Chen Fa Ke, grandson of Chen Changxing and grandfather to Chen Xiaowang, Ren's teacher, took Lao Jia to Beijing in 1928 and also was the creator of Xin Jia or New Frame, featured in this video, which is based on Lao Jia and also consists of two routines. Xin Jia Yi Lu comprised of 83 forms, as opposed to Lao Jia Yi Lu's, which is comprised of 75 forms. Xin Jia comprised of more complex, silk reeling movements and contains more Fa Jing with Qin Na techniques. The movements in Lao Jia are usually large, whereas Xin Jia contains many smaller and more complicated movements. Master Ren declares empathetically that the development of power does not come from forced effort but from a strong foundation. To achieve this, he encourages the correct alignment of body and shoulders and hips, of elbows and knees and hands and feet, as well as a correct transference of weight. He believes the common mistakes that practitioners of the art make are the failure to sink and relax the hips and failure to clearly distinguish between yin and yang within the body. In other words, 
which leg should be full or carry the weight, and which leg should be empty. Ren believes that power is developed in Chen Sao Tai Ji Xun naturally from correct and diligent practice. We practice the forms repeatedly like a master musician is made to practice his scales until eventually he can break the confines of the structure and become a free stylist. The same with Tai Ji. The highest level is to be spontaneous, natural when applying techniques. He also explains that the practice of forms is essential to the development of technique expertise in push hands and fighting. Chin Na can clearly be developed without Tai Chi Chuan forms practice, but Master Ren feels that without the form, one can only reach a certain level. With practice of Tai Chi Chuan and applying the principles of Tai Chi, the practitioner develops the sensitivity needed to escape and evade locks and holds and also to know where the opponent's energy is going when he is attempting to escape and evade and how to follow. Just as with chess, one must learn to be one or several moves ahead of the opponent. In the traditions of Chen style Tai Chi Chuan, Master Ren demonstrates precise and powerful fluid movements and like his predecessors, teaches the art pure with attention to focusing the breath and combining spiral silk reeling movements. Together with the principles and philosophies of yin and yang, the alternation of soft and hard, slow and fast, empty and full, and relaxation and contraction, these are the principles and the essence of Chen style Tai Chi Chun. Thank you.